cholera, plague, Japanese encephalitis, typhoid, typhus, trench fever, yellow fever, dengue fever, diphtheria, dysentery. That's just a sampling of what I could face on an upcoming four-month solo trip around the world. According to the experts, I wasn't supposed to drink the water, eat the food, or kiss the women. Swimming in fresh water, walking around barefoot, definitely out. But there was one thing I feared more than any ghastly disease, and I'd get to that later. So this trip took place in 2007. I'd been working as an editor for PC World Magazine for 15 years and one day, laid off. Soon after, my girlfriend gave me the old. So I moped around my apartment for a couple days. I moped around the local coffee shop for a couple days. I moped around the gym for a couple days. And finally, I started moping around the local bookstore. And I found myself in the travel section. And I started thumbing through all the lonely planets and the rough guides, you know, those gorgeous travel guide books with the sumptuous photos and the delicious text and the descriptions of the places you'll go and the things you'll do and the people you'll meet. And using the books, I went ahead and booked a four month solo trip around the world. I started in Boston, went to Venezuela, Greece, South Africa, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, Australia, New Zealand and back to Boston. Now, most people, when they get back from an exotic trip, they rave about the food and the culture and the friendly local people. I'm not gonna say that they're lying, 